All right, so today we're gonna be gluing the Ceratex up to the ceiling using contact cement. See right there. And so I need to get my ventilator on real fast. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, eye protection, gloves. And so what I do is I uh, roll the contact cement up onto the ceiling and then using the pre-cut portions of Ceratex that we uh, uh, cut using Workshop Buddy, we can glue it up there. And then I come back with a dry roller to just kind of push it in there really good. Uh, it needs to be above 65 degrees. It's just 65 degrees outside, but it's definitely hotter in here. So we should be good. Uh, this was our test one and it's staying up pretty good. So here we go. All right, good morning. So today we're gonna do some cleanup. Uh, we ran out of contact cement yesterday, and so I haven't been able to finish gluing the Ceratex up. Um, though I'll give you a quick peek in here. You can see you got most of it up. Jess is in there doing some cleaning. We're gonna get the bus cleaned back up because there's tons and tons of ceramic fibers everywhere. Um, she should be wearing her respirator. Uh, she said she's going to. Um, and so we're going to do some cleanup and some scrapping today. So we've recovered tons and tons of what seems to be stainless steel, aluminum, and then the steel from the, um, the seats that were in the bus. And so we're going to load this all up into the trailer today and take it to the scrapper, hopefully get a little bit of money, and then hit up Home Depot. You can see we've been trying to keep things organized, but we need to get some stuff out of it so we can make more room. And so we'll catch up with you in a bit. All right, we're all loaded up and ready to go. So we're gonna take that pile right there to the scrappers and sail and see what we can get out of them. So not bad, been to the Scrapper Cherry City Metals for the first time here in Salem, Oregon. So we had to drive up, uh, it's about a 30 minute drive. We'll spend the day going to the ReStore and do some fun stuff with the kids. But we made a little bit of cash off of the, the metal that we had uh, that we weren't gonna use. And so not bad. Uh, what's that about, one for about $150, which isn't bad at all for some stainless steel and some aluminum. So, good times. On the way back from the metal scrappers, we stopped at Home Depot. There it is. And to pick up the underlayment. So there's 24 boards there. So that's like $700 worth of board. And this will just be uh, that first layer of ceiling that will hold in the rock wool insulation and two layers on the wall with Ceratex in between and then we still need to put a layer of nicer prettier wood on the outside of that so uh with wood prices the way they are it's getting spendy So that banging is them inside trying to get the corner of the window loose. Looks like it's almost there, so I'm gonna have to hang up soon. Um, but we're trying to get this window out so that we could swap it with another window. We use these suction cup things so that we don't drop them. Dropping something. So we're at the end of a, a long two-day project of getting 
the Ceratex insulation up. And I don't know if I said this already in one of the videos, but uh, in the heat of the day yesterday, I touched the bare metal and it, it was burning my hand. And then I touched just the area with the Ceratex and it was, it was uh, significantly cooler. And so I look forward to putting up the next layer of insulation and just seeing how it cools the space. So we finally got that done today. Um, just a couple small spaces that we need to do. But the big thing that we accomplished today was actually swapping out some windows. And so this window was broken and then this one also had a small crack on it. Um, we've ordered two sliding windows. These all um, go outwards like this. Um, and, but we've ordered two sliding windows from Motion Windows in Vancouver and they're about a thousand dollars each so we can only afford two. Um, but it's a 12 week lead time. So we're not actually gonna have them until uh, September. So what we've done is we swamped the windows, the, the broken one and the other one to where the windows that we've ordered are gonna be. And so in that process, we, we took them out and we removed the, the factory kind of like the spongy seal that goes with it. It had been worn out in some spots. For the most part, it was actually pretty good. And we found very few leaks in the bus. And so that's probably why. And what we've done is we've replaced it with butyl tape, uh, which is like a, a waterproof clay, uh, very sticky gum-like stuff, comes in strips. So all around the edge, all around the edge on the, on the inside, uh, outside, not the outside, but the, um, between the frame and the frame of the bus. Um, and then on the ones that are not uh, going to be replaced, so these two permanent ones, we actually put a bead of, of Henry's silicone sealant uh, right on, not on top of like layered, but above uh, the butyl tape all around the edge. And that should harden tonight just to give us that watertight seal. We don't expect to be removing these windows ever. So these two have that. Tomorrow, we're gonna remove the other 12 and just bring them in reseal them and put them right back. And so no swapping there. Um, other than that, uh, and that was a, a huge portion of the day, um, we got some furring strips cut. Uh, both my sons uh, did some cutting there. And then my daughter actually, she got to learn how to use the, uh, the chop saw. And we went ahead and did a test run of what that will be. So you can see here, there's a decent overhang. Um, from the uh, from the the rib the rib of the bus sorry um, and that will allow us to tuck the the rock wool insulation behind it and also give us a good amount of of screwing in space for our ceiling without actually going into the bus the goal is to actually have a full thermal break and so we use some kill mat which is a sound deadening uh, rubber tar material that we've used in our first conversion, we still had a good amount of it left over. So we cut it into strips and you can see that we put that between um, the, the furring strip and the frame so that there's just that, that thermal break. So uh, that brings us to the end of today. And uh, yeah, it's going, it's going, cheers. It's now Friday and uh, we finally got one side of the bus's windows all the way out and we resealed them and then we reinstalled them. I didn't get many pictures or videos of us doing it, um, but what we did discover is that if you took the windows, instead of taking them down onto the floor uh, outside, but if you kind of angle it and bring it into the bus, we could do it a lot faster. I said in the past video that we, uh, or the past clip, that we sealed these up with silicone and butyl tape, which we did. But then I remembered that that's not what I wanted to do. And so they'll be fine, they'll, they're, they're nice and sealed. Um, but th for the rest of these, uh, I use a polyurethane, polyurethane sealant, as well as the butyl tape. Uh, as well as we went into the corners here, I don't know if you can kind of see, and we've sprayed in uh, expanding foam so that, find another place where it is. Yeah, here we go, we need to cut it off still. So. Uh, some expanding foam there so that it just insulates it better. We we're hoping to get both sides of the bus done today, but um, I'd gotten some sealant from the ReStore and went to use it and it was not coming out of the caulking gun at all. In fact, I broke two caulking guns also from the ReStore. 
uh, in the process and just looked at it and the, the stuff had expired in 2015. Um, so no wonder it doesn't work anymore, but I was able to go and pick up some equivalent, get a new caulking gun and we busted it out real fast. Uh, we'll have to wait till Monday to finish the other side because tomorrow we're gonna go see Thor Love and Thunder and then uh, Sunday is our, our day off and a day of rest and go to church and stuff. So the bus is coming along. Cheers.